And now, ladies and gentlemen, the man we all know and love, Charles Barkley! Action. Check this out. Charles Barkley was born and raised in the small town of Leeds, Alabama, where he learned the value of hard work at an early age. My mother cleaned houses, and my grandmother worked at a meat factory. They did whatever it took to make sure that we had something all the time. We didn't have a lot, but we never went without. So that's probably the greatest thing that I learned from him, just do whatever it takes to make yourself successful. And Charles would be an instant success at Auburn University. He emerged as one of the nation's best college players, despite packing a few extra pounds. Hello, I'm Charles Barkley at Auburn Tigers. Here I feel my nickname, the bread truck, the love boat, food world, the Frisco kid, which is my second favorite, the wide loaf of lead, the town of fun, the good time blimp. But my favorite is the round mound the rebound. In 1984, Barkley was drafted by the 76ers and he quickly showed he was a force to be reckoned with, a force unlike any the NBA had ever seen before. Here you had a power forward in a small forward's body uh, with guard instincts, and uh, there's never been a player that I can remember that combined all of that. Charles just taking over now. Oh, oh what a pass! Oh, that's the pass of the oh, year. That's a finish, gotta finish. Oh, what a rejection by Berkeley! What a play, what a play! Comes Charles, down the lane, goodbye. Well, Charles is bright, and he's very funny. I think he enjoyed being outrageous. Uh, a lot of times he was outrageous in a very uh, charming way. Well, we don't have a lot of plays. Only, only plays we got is get the ball to me somehow. Charles placed the responsibility for the team's success squarely on his shoulders, and he would make Philadelphia one of the top teams in the East. But each year, the Sixers would be eliminated in the playoffs, and Charles took responsibility for their failures as well. You know, most of the people out there, they don't understand. They think it's just a game you play. This is uh, your job, and you really, you really care about winning and losing. With each passing season, Charles felt his dream of a championship slipping further away. Finally, he could no longer contain his frustration, and he began to voice his criticism of the Sixers organization. That was a bad time for me. I mean, I ain't lying. I didn't think I was going to make it. I didn't think I was going to make it, and I, I will truthfully admit that. I thought I was going to go crazy. Charles Barkley, he has talked long and hard and loud about his hunger for an NBA title. He was traded to the Phoenix Suns in a three-for-one deal. The trade... One chapter Charles of Barkley's life was closing, and another was about to begin. But before heading off to Phoenix, he spent the summer of 92 in Barcelona as a member of the Dream Team. Playing for the greatest team ever assembled, he started to recapture his zest for the game. Sometimes I dream that he is me. I just want to be like Chuck, I mean Mike. It was an honor to be on that team. If I don't think anything could compare with that first dream team, uh, nothing can compare with that. As he arrived in Phoenix, Charles instantly became a fan favorite. The trade had left him rejuvenated, and it clearly showed. With a fresh chance to win his first championship, Barkley was playing like a man on a mission. Here he comes again, and here comes Charles. Don't get in his way. I don't mean to brag, but can't no one person stop me. But don't take that person. That role of, of being uh, Mr. Big Tough Guy all the time, making sure that everybody knew that, you know, when the Suns are coming to town, it's, it's a possibility of you getting blown out, getting your butt kicked or whatever. In Phoenix, Charles would have the greatest season of his career. He won the NBA's Most Valuable Player Award while leading the Suns to the league's best record and took them all the way to the 93 finals. God want us to win the world championship. <laughs> I don't know if I go that far, Charles, no, no. but I talked to him another night. But while Barkley played valiantly, he still fell short of his ultimate goal. The Suns would lose in six games in the finals at the hands of Michael Jordan and the Bulls. Go, go, go! In 1996, his career took another new turn as he was traded to Houston. Would reach it, Oak. You know you can't guard me, boy. He still showed flashes of being the Barkley of old, but Father Time was starting to catch up with him. I used to be a Chippendale, now I'm a Clydesdale. <laughs> <laughs>
After a series of injuries, Charles announced that 2000 would be his final season. But in December of 99, it appeared that his career would be cut even shorter than planned. Charles Barkley suffered a ruptured quadriceps tendon, which will require surgery, and apparently is a season-ending injury. But Charles wanted to go out on his own terms, so he began working hard to rehabilitate his knee injury. And he would make it back to suit up one final time in the Rockets' last game of the season against Vancouver. Ricky Norris going to the basket, lays it up, misses. Oh, oh, oh. With a rebound, Charles with a comeback, and he's fouled. Charles Barkley gets a bucket in his final game. For 16 seasons, Charles Barkley electrified the NBA. His talent was unquestioned, but there was something more to his greatness, an inner drive that even opponents had to admire. I tell you what, if you was going to war and you was in a foxhole, that's the guy you want with you because you know he's going to give you everything he got while he's out there. Uh, just a guy who got the most out of his ability, and when you paid to see him play, he played hard every night. That's it. Simple. 